listened to our first episode. This is or our pilot episode. Our pilot episode. This is episode two. And uh, so thank you so much if you did listen. If you're here for the first time, we're happy you're here. And thank you guys for the feedback. We, uh, we are really here. appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, that was really nice. It's awesome that people are into this, that people care about it, and we had so much fun, and we're ready to have some more fun. We're going to have even more fun. Well, I'm Brittany. <laughs> and I'm Amy. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the podcast we don't have a name for yet, um, but for those of you who participated in our poll on Instagram, we have our top three names. So, we're hoping... Top three, we're gonna narrow it down on episode three. Yes. And pick a name. We're gonna commit. We're gonna, we're gonna commit get in a committed time. relationship <laughs> with a name next time. So, here we go. Top, top names. Three. Top, th- top three, right? Or top four? Well, there's a tie oh, for right. the third place. Yeah. So, technically, it's top three, but it's actually four names. So, <laughs> we have Dark Alignment in the lead. Okay. Let it sink in. We have Death by the Stars, which is also very fun. And then tied for third place, we have Charted Mysteries and Unfortunate Alignments. So, not sure where we're going to go with it, so be sure to follow us on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, Maruth Rose. We're going to put up another poll. It's going to be awesome. This is the final decision, guys. The final countdown. The final Final countdown. Final (laughs) countdown. Okay. And I'm at Britt Oakley, B R I T T underscore Oakley, O A K L E Y. Yes, um, that's all I have as far as plugs go. Nothing um, fancy happening, but Amy. She's got a great account, guys. You need to follow. Um, yeah, if you like, if you like dachshunds and you like pole dancing, follow me. That's that's pretty much my my spam. Body I'm positivity. Throwing. Body positivity, all of the above. It's a Check good me out. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, and if you're into astrology, I post daily astrological readings on my Patreon as well. There um, is a link in my bio on Instagram and in the link in the description here. <laughs> I <don't laughs> do <this>. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I also have spots available for personal daily readings if you're into that. If you, I really like doing a lot of mental health kind of things on there. Like, I always warn people, hey, uh, you might feel triggered today. Like, today might be a rough day for you. Not in a um, pessimistic way, but like a, a like it's like a watch warning. yourself. Like yeah, yeah. Like, stay, give yourself rest today. Give yourself a break. You know? Um, I know about this because I am <laughs> a Patreon <laughs> subscriber of Amy's, and I get my personal daily reading, and I freaking love it. It's mm-hmm. definitely worth the thank you, the few dollars a yeah. month to get <laughs> my daily custom info. I love it so much. Tells me all my stars and you get yeah, it's fun to know what's going on. I'll check my own chart every day too. I'm like, oh, what's coming on for me? Like Yes. So that's the cool stuff we have going on. We do have a special guest with us um today. So let's introduce Barley. (laughs) Get me here. The new co host, everyone. We'll see how she does. She's auditioning. (laughs) This is Barley. For her first debut Aww. on the podcast. Stick her up there. My <laughs> pink style. Oh, she loves it. Oh, Hi. Are you a star? Yes. So Barley's going to be joining us today. It's a it's a girl power kind of a day, if, if you will. Um, because this week, we've chosen not to do a victim. Last week, we did the Black Dahlia. Mm-hmm. Great story. This week, we're going a little twisted. I wanted to do a serial killer's chart. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. I really wanted to see her feel a chart, and she knew the perfect person. I went with, I mean, when I say it's like my favorite, <laughs> I don't mean that I love killing. I mean, right, yeah. um, this is a, a serial killer I've been fascinated with since childhood. Just uh, so different from so many others. We're going to be doing the one and only Eileen Wernos, the only female serial killer to kill in the same manner as a male. Because traditionally, Serial killers have been what they call angels of death. So mm, these are yeah. ones that are like a caretaker, yeah. poisoning. I'm gonna six. put a little bubble in your IV. Yes, yeah. yes. Or like um, somebody who's a caretaker and they're seen in a high regard by people that they know. Like, mm-hmm. oh, she's such a good person. She can take care of her whole family while they passed away. 
away, and she goes, you know, fucking poisoning them the oh, whole time. Oh, like they weren't necessarily on. Okay. Oh no, they yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they weren't, weren't ill at all until they got involved with her. She cool. was like, "Come stay with me," you know. Yeah. Um. So those angel of death uh, kind of stories. Mm -hmm. You're already not doing great, Harley. There's a lot of noises all of a sudden. I'll give you another chance. You get another chance this time. Okay, call, you you gotta call back. <laughs> Don't make me regret this. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and get into kind of the story of Eileen. I think um, mm -hmm. people know mainly about her story from the 2003 blockbuster Monster. It was actually um, made after her life. After she had already passed away, she was uh, executed the year before. Mm -hmm. But when that movie came out, I mean, Charlize Theron did an amazing job portraying her. I mean, talking yeah. physically, too. I mean, looked mm -hmm. identical. Eileen. Oh, I might have seen a picture of that. I've seen like a, like before and after, like transition, transformation, character transformation. You thing. have to do like a double yeah. take because she looks exactly it's like Eileen. Awesome. And it's, it's crazy. She did a fantastic job. Um, but Eileen was actually born in Michigan on a leap year. She was born February so 29th. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. It is interesting. Um, it doesn't mean that much astrologically, but it's which interesting. I, which bums me out. I want that to be. <laughs> she wanted it to be something like, ooh, but no. Not I got really. pumped. Unless I don't know something. Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let me know if there is something special when you're born on a leap year, other than you just don't get a real birthday <laughs> very often. Um, which was pretty fitting for Eileen, because her yeah. childhood was horrific. Oh, so, um, <laughs> so let's talk about the world that she came into. So Eileen entered a world with two parents. Um, her mom was 14 fucking years old when she was born and already had one yeah. child. That's rough. So, you know, you have your second kid at 14. Yes. Um, Eileen's father was only 16, so you got two teenage parents in the mid-50s with two kids. So that was not That's stress. Um, That's all a stress. popular way to start your family. No, not popular. Very stressful. We're talking... <laughs> Yeah, you're a mom. Yeah, uh, and I'm like a young mom. I'm not a high school, I'm not that young of a mom. You, you're not a 13-year-old child bride. Even having a baby in college, like, that was, that felt really stressful. I can't imagine 14. Yeah. And, uh, so 14 years old, having two children, it's the 50s. Mm -hmm. Um, so Eileen had an older brother named Keith. Their parents were very, very young. It's like a seventh grader and a freshman, you know, just starting family. <laughs> Big shocker. Um, their relationship did not last. So after less than two years of marriage, she, uh, Eileen's mom, Diane, filed for divorce. And she was seven months pregnant with Eileen at the time. So think about the world Eileen was born into. A teenage mother who's already divorced. Mm -hmm. And um, her mom abandoned her and her what? brother when, they were, when Eileen was four years oh old. So gosh. Keith would have been five. Eileen was four. And they got left with their grandparents. So and they knew at that age. You, that four year old knows. Yeah. You you your know who that. your mom and dad yeah. are. You know, or she mm -hmm. didn't know who her dad was, but I mean, it's like you know who your mom is. Yeah. Um, at that age, you form somewhat of a bond, even if it's a disorganized yeah um, type of a bond. There's something there, like you know who that person is. They're supposed to take care of you. Mm -hmm. So right away, Eileen is abandoned. Um, she never met her father. He was. He was actually in prison when she was born. Um, he was schizophrenic mm -hmm. and uh, convicted of sex crimes against children. So oh, he wow. was not a fantastic guy. Wow. Um, he committed suicide by hanging himself in prison when Eileen was 13. So wow. she never got a chance to meet him, which doesn't sound like he was uh, going to be a fantastic influence anyway. I don't know that. I do not want to judge. Yeah, especially. you never know like, how. It's just. Uh, I don't know the the, the child crimes. I, I just totally, mm, totally I can't. So now, uh, trigger warning. Going to talk about Eileen's. There's probably a trigger warning. Uh, again, trigger every warning single should be podcast. at the top of the show. or late. <laughs> trigger warning. Um, That's our subtitle. <laughs> that is the subtitle. The whole thing just flashing in the corner. <laughs> so she struggled a lot through um, her early years. Her story gets way fucking sadder, because when she's 11 years old, um, that's when she starts doing sexual favors at school. Oh, so, so she young. was uh, 
doing things at school with boys mm -hmm. in exchange for cigarettes and drugs and wow. food. Um, but they called her some pretty upsetting names. Yeah. Um, one of the ones that really sticks out to me that hurts my heart a lot is they called her Sig Pig because she would do anything for a cigarette. And uh, that's, oh my God. To, can you imagine? A, like you're talking 11, 12 years old. And you got that old. kind of reputation already. You think about what it's like, like to be a little you. girl at that age, and uh. oh, the thought of the thought of this life and this name calling and just like being known this way. Um, like the connotation of that is so degrading. Yeah. It's so upsetting. I, I hate it so much. Um, they just didn't see her as a person and they didn't treat her like a person. Nobody really ever did. So yeah. Eileen kind of had this really sad childhood. Um, she also supposedly engaged in sexual activity with her brother starting mm -hmm. at age 10. Yeah. Um, that her alcoholic grandfather had been sexually assaulting her mm -hmm. most of her life. So the well, I don't know why I assumed the grandparents were better. <laughs> I mean, you, that's because it's traditional. Uh, I was hoping. You would hope that. I was yeah. hoping, yeah. And you would think that, too. Like, okay, well, we've got young parents. Well, maybe the grandparents, you know, are going to be the people mm -hmm. that raise this child or raise the children. Mm. So, oh apparently before beating her, he would force Eileen to strip out of her clothes. Um, when Eileen is 13, she gets pregnant after being raped by the friend of a... Of her grandfather so like a family friend who hung out around the house um raped her resulting in a pregnancy and she gave birth to the baby because they sent her away to a woman's like a commune yeah, like a, uh -huh, a place because they, they have to go because y'all it's the 60s they went on vacation mm -hmm. yeah she's you know, out of town she's visiting an aunt you know so they sent her to a home for unwed mothers in 1971 she gave birth to a son and the child was immediately placed for adoption. Oh so God. Eileen never held the baby, never touched the baby. Um, she never had a chance at all to yeah. understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. She never received any sort of counseling. Oh. She never got any any help. And how old is she now? She's she still is like uh, 13, 14, right? She, yeah, yeah, she is uh, 15 years old 15. when she's thrown out of the house for good. So her grandfather throws her out. She uh, began supporting herself as a full-time sex worker at that time, and oh she lived God. in a wooded area near her home. And you're talking Michigan. Yeah, yeah. It's cold. cold. It's cold. She's living in the woods. She is still, for a while, she was still actually attending school. So she'd mm -hmm. go to school. Trying to keep going. Right. She, then she's homeless, doing mm -hmm. sexual favors in the woods. I mean, just, it. it's so sad, and it really explains kind of the next things that are going to happen so she starts getting to a life of criminal activity and a lot of it is by necessity as far as like yeah. stealing and theft mm -hmm. um when she's 18 she's arrested in colorado for dui disorderly conduct firing a gun from a moving vehicle so um, she was later charged with a failure to appear for that so yeah didn't make it to court um, and then when she's 20, she actually hitchhiked to Florida. So she wanted to relocate, hitchhiked to Florida. It's warm all the time. It's a lot easier to live a transient yeah. style life. And then she lived in the Daytona Beach area. Yeah, it's not frigid <laughs> half the year. You can sleep on the beach that, you know, it's, it's easier to survive and you can do sex yeah. work year round there because, you know, when you are hitchhiking and right. kind of running your business model that way, that was the way and that people you did are, sex People go to the beach and look for a good time. Right. And all, yeah. And that, that's the way you did sex work then. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, there's a lot of other ways and other yeah. avenues, but when you're talking back in the 80s... There's not, you know, you can't pop on sex yet. Right? The 70s and the 80s, you were hitting the streets. Like, there wasn't, no. or you had a pimp. Like, there wasn't a safe way to do sex work then, mm -hmm. um, like there is now. But she ended up meeting a 70-year-old yacht club president when she was 20. She hitchhiked with him, got to know him. And uh, they got married. Whoa! So this was Unexpected. kind of this was Unexpected kind of her ticket out. He was a you know country club. Married. How old is she here? Sorry. She is twenty years old. Okay, twenty. He okay. is seventy years old. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he is very very wealthy. This was kind of her ticket out of the life that she had okay. lived. Okay. Um, if she had been able to make that work, but poor Eileen. Like, she always knew, and she says this in later interviews, like, she always knew something was wrong with her life, mm -hmm. and she never knew how to fix it. She didn't know right. how, she couldn't figure it out, she didn't have she the She started things. off on such a, in such a bad, yeah. Yeah. 
she had no tools, no mm -hmm. chance, um, no wherewithal on yeah. how to like guide her life. But this was, you know, this could have been something really big for her. They got married, they had a wedding announcement in the paper, uh, in the newspaper society pages. Like she was part of high society at this point. And uh, she had essentially made it out of that bad life. But of course, it quickly fell apart, and I mean, fucking fast. Like it, <laughs> it was like sand running through your fingers. It was <laughs> very quick. Um, Eileen kept getting into confrontations at the local bar. She was a heavy drinker and a mm -hmm. partier. Um, at one point, she went to jail for assault in wow. there. Um, she hit her husband with his own cane. Not good. Not good. Not, 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 um, not usually, no. <laughs> he got a restraining order against her, and that was on week nine of their marriage. Oh, I pictured this years in for some reason. No, no, this yeah, was, okay, okay. That, you yeah, know, yeah, they yeah. had a, almost a 90-day trial. <laughs> you know, oh. <laughs> didn't quite make, make it that far. Oh. Um, so they actually ended up getting the marriage annulled. And, okay. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Um, at this point, Eileen... Somewhere in here, she attempts suicide, where she mm -hmm. actually shoots herself in the stomach. Mm -hmm. um, she says that that was not her first suicide attempt. She right. was really depressed, struggling with addiction. And her whole life was miserable. Yeah. Right. It's a really tragic story, and it stays a tragic story for a little while longer, like, where we mm -hmm. feel sorry for Eileen. Yes. You know, yes. it, there are a lot of victims of her. Mm -hmm. Um, but at this point, she's still... Right, she's still... Holy shit, I feel so bad for this yeah. woman. Like, her life has been a horrible tragedy. Um, so she ends up going back to Michigan. Okay. And she's immediately arrested and charged with assault and disturbing the peace for throwing a cue ball at a bartender's head. So, you know, wow. there's some anger. Um, right after this, her brother Keith died of esophageal cancer, which was really tough for her. Um, and Eileen ended up getting ten thousand dollars from his life insurance, so she ended really? up like actually. Okay, so that could this that could have been keep hold her over a little bit while, maybe as long as it's not like a credit card situation. This could have been like fresh start, mm -hmm. like a chance to really, you know, that's enough right. money where you could really do something, especially yeah. back then. Oh, true. It you know, definitely. this was quite a while ago. Where ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars would get you a lot further than it would now. Yeah. Um, but now a month later, she gets fined for drunk driving. She used the money she inherited to pay the fine no. and spent the rest within two months buying luxuries, including a new car that she wrecked a few weeks later. So she's a fucking hot mess. Oh my god. She's like so, so self destructive. But also, like, you, you, you live this life and then you get all that money. Like, do you know what to do with it, really? Like, I mean, well, they say. I mean, the Curse of the Lottery. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever watched any of the Curse of the Lottery stuff? A little bit. Like, like I've heard about it. Yeah. So it's one of those things where they say like if you've never been mm -hmm. raised with money and all of a sudden you have a bunch that you'll lose it like just as yeah. fast as you got it because <laughs> you don't know how to manage it. You don't know what mm -hmm. to do with it. Like it's right. dangerous for you yeah. and it's like a frivolous mm -hmm. situation where it like leads to I think this is. I've heard it can be like uh, you end up more depressed than you were in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, of course she can't be responsible with it. Nobody taught her how to be. Like, she mm -hmm. didn't know what to do with that. She wasn't thinking about investments, we'll say. Her investment was that car, which, you know, that mm -hmm. would have, in theory, yeah. been a nice step up for her. Right. But, of course, she has an alcohol problem, and cars and alcoholism do not mix. No. I know from experience. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They don't. <laughs> so... Um, that didn't work out for her. She's a disaster. She keeps getting arrested constantly. So here we go. Um, I'm not going to go deep into these <laughs> arrests it's because so many. for the next, like, five years, oh. at this point, she's, like, 24 years old, and there's, of course, a time where she's just getting arrested constantly. almost nonstop. Um, we'd be here all day if I went in too deep. What do you need? Barley. Oh. Barley. Barley cries. Barley is struggling. Come here. The attention's not on her. She won't come all the way to me either, because she's a dachshund. Um, so she's like, no, you come get me now. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Almost. Ugh. Okay. Can you sit and be a good girl? All right. I need you to be a good baby. We're telling stories. Oh, oh, such a love. Okay, be a good baby. <laughs> all right, here we go. Eileen, getting in trouble okay. every fucking all day. Right, go, go. 
age 25, arrested for armed robbery of a convenience store where she stole $35 and two packs of cigarettes in a fucking bikini. <laughs> she actually went to prison for this and was released when she was 27. Wow. She was arrested again within a year for trying to cash forged checks. Um, at 28, this is when she says that she started dating women and she entered um, what she regards as a very sinful lesbian lifestyle. So she was very self-hating, mm -hmm. um, which is not good. And for the time period, yeah, yeah. What are you going to I mean, find a positive mindset, probably? She attributes a lot of like her dark decline to um, the demons in her. Oh, with, with, okay. Yeah. Okay. So... That's interesting. But age 29, named a suspect in theft of a revolver and some ammo, and then she was arrested for car theft, resisting arrest, obstruction of justice, providing false information. Um, she actually used her aunt's name for one of these, which you cannot do. Um, she had a gun and a box of ammo and her stolen car with her. Oh my God. Uh, at age 30, she was held for questioning after a man accused her of pulling a gun in his car and demanding $200. Wow. Guess what she had on her when they found her? Drugs. No. Oh. Ammunition. Again, oh. and a oh, gun. Okay, okay, okay. Under the passenger seat. Okay. She's always got a gun. It doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> okay. She's got a gun. She's got a gun. She's got a gun. Go <laughs> ahead. Um, so, at this point, she's a disaster as far as criminal activity goes. Enter Tyria Moore. Ooh. Yes. Dun dun dun. So, I know that is. Oh. so Tyria Moore was the love of her life. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, in the movie Monster, mm -hmm. was played by the super super cute Christina Ricci. Ooh. So, okay. Christina Ricci, adorable, such a generous portrayal of Tyria Moore. <laughs> I've heard her name pronounced both Tyria and mm -hmm. Tyra. Okay. But it's spelled Tyria. It's T Y R I. I was almost hoping it was gonna be Mary Tyler Moore. <gasps> and Mary Tyler the name Moore. Is Moore. <laughs> um, but it's Christina Ricci. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, Tyria Moore in real life, you know, she had more of like a rat tail situation. Uh -huh. It was definitely not super cute, Christina mm -hmm. Ricci. So there's that. Okay. So that's very nice of them to to put her as that character. Um, so love of her life. And she says that all the way till she's like, executed. So wow. she held to that Tyria Moore was the mm -hmm. love of her life. Um, Ty was a hotel mate um, at a Daytona Beach gay bar mm -hmm. is where they met. They moved in together really quickly, and uh, they lived like nomads. They were kind of like, Fun. they live in a hotel mm -hmm. room this week, in a different hotel this week, mm -hmm. and now they've got, they're crashing at this mm -hmm. place or that place. So they had a really nomadic lifestyle, but Eileen fully supported them. Mm -hmm. In the career path, she had known her whole life. What was that? A sex worker. Oh. She, at this point, had been a sex worker for 15 years. So half of her right. life she had spent um, yeah. um, living that way. She really didn't know any other way to make mm -hmm. money. So, and her and Ty, you know, started to get into trouble together. Mm -hmm. Ty says she never approved of Eileen as a sex worker and actually mm -hmm. wanted her to stop. Yeah. But at the same time, Eileen what, what wanted to support yeah. her. Like, she was afraid that Ty would leave mm -hmm. if uh, she couldn't give her a place yeah. to live and they couldn't party. Like, they liked to right. party. And they needed to maintain the, yeah. The, the lifestyle, mm -hmm. the fucking luxurious lifestyle of hotel room partying in Daytona Beach. Um, so, she continued down that path. They were arrested a few different times. Um, Ty was usually a witness to mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff. Like, they'd be out at the bar. Eileen gets in a fight. Uh, she assaulted one guy with a beer bottle. Oh. Um, a year later, Eileen accuses a city bus driver of assaulting her, uh, <laughs> claiming he threw her off a bus after a confrontation. Mm -hmm. Ty apparently was the witness. Their relationship was very much one where Eileen just wanted to spoil her. Yeah. You know, like, you're my young, my young hot lover, and I want to spoil you because I want to keep you. Um, and Eileen was desperate for yeah. that loving relationship. Like... Can you imagine? Like, poor baby. Her right. whole life, she'd been abandoned and used, and Ty was the first person who ever loved her back. So that meant something to Eileen. Like, that's that huge. Was, that yeah. is huge. I mean, she was 30 when she met her, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, like, a long time. That's a long, long time. Yeah, 30 years of her life where you're completely rejected, and mm -hmm. finally there's one person who's willing to return that love. Eileen completely yeah. attached, and 
wasn't willing to let that go. She would have done anything. Mm -hmm. Anything to keep her. So that's, like, where shit is about to get really dark. So all this, like, empathy that you feel for Eileen, it's going to go away pretty quick. Because mm -hmm. once she starts killing, it, it shit, gets, shit gets crazy. So, are you ready for murder? But I'm gonna take this as a yes. There were guns, right? She had a oh, gun. guns! We got guns everywhere. Guns be flying. Okay, so seven men were killed within one year along the Florida highways. Wow. So this was really confusing to police. That's not the normal type right. of victim they're used to finding. Mm -hmm. There's so um, many. Typically, when you're seeing bodies like that kind of discarded along the highway, they are women. Mm -hmm. You're not used to seeing. Yeah. Male victims. Like, what is he doing there? So this is wake up, dude. <laughs> dude, get up. So it's really interesting. Um, it's not the normal gender they're used to seeing, and no one suspected a woman. Yeah. At this point, Eileen was thirty-three. Um, her first victim was a convicted rapist who she claimed that she killed in self-defense. Wow. She goes on to say I that mean, about that, that could totally be true. Right. Yeah. You she know, hadn't killed if that was her first. Like. I mean, your rape story is your rape story. Yeah. I would never want to discredit somebody yeah. for that. Um, so that's what she says, but she also says that about all seven. Yeah. Um, this is where this is where it gets a little a little glitchy. No, so. Who knows what's going on in her head? Right. Oh, oh we're gonna look. At, I mean, we're, we're gonna, gonna get look, but some, like. <laughs> I've got some fun quotes. She was a lot of fun. Oh, she did a lot of interviews. <laughs> uh, in jail up to like the week before her death. I bet everybody wanted to talk to her. Yeah. Oh. She was a talker, too. I'm excited to see your church. Yeah, I can't. Coming up soon. Coming. Just keep listening. <laughs> coming soon. Um, so, she, of course, guess what she used to kill him? I'm going to let you guess. Was it a gun? It was a okay. gun. It was a gun. She loves guns. Um, <laughs> so, they found his abandoned vehicle, and then they found his body where he was shot several times. Most of her victims were shot six to oh ten times. Gosh. There's wow. a reoccurring theme with with her mm -hmm. with her murder. So the next victim, construction That's a lot. worker. Something, who doesn't hear all those gunshots? She's doing this along the highway. She pulled mm -hmm. off and would take them a little ways away because uh, yeah, no one's gonna pay attention to that. The way she would get them is she is hi, mm -hmm. I'm a sex worker. Pick mm -hmm. me up. They're being secretive, picking yeah. her up in the first place. Oh She's God. saying here, this let's go to this go. spot. Mm -hmm. I know this spot. They pull off the highway mm -hmm. on this vacant road, mm -hmm. abandoned. Wow. Um, she would, at that point, get them out of the vehicle. Yeah. She would shoot them, kill them, rob them, and they usually steal their vehicle, sometimes for only a day or two, and then abandon it. Wow. So you've got male bodies off the side of the road yeah. in kind of these weird remote locations, all gunshot wounds, multiple, um, all wow. robbery situations, mm -hmm. and all their vehicles had been abandoned. So that mm -hmm. was consistent with each one of her victims. Uh, one six times shot another one nine times. Um, there were she left evidence in the vehicles. They were all men in their forties to sixties. So, um, pretty interesting there. Wow. I mean, ever you're talking everything from actual sex offenders right. who we talked about, mm -hmm. uh, truck drivers, um, men in the military. Mm -hmm. One was a police officer that was a mm -hmm. he was actually a state child abuse investigator that she ended up wow. murdering. Another one. Um, I believe he was a pastor. Like, I mean, she just was, she was killing anybody. It wasn't, yeah, it was, like a specific type of, her, yeah. No, it was wow. really anybody who she got in their mm -hmm. vehicle because a lot of people is suspected that they were just giving her a ride because right. she was hitchhiking. Yeah. You know, not mm -hmm. necessarily, necessarily soliciting mean, sex work yeah. from her. But her claim every time was that she had been mm -hmm. raped. Um, and then Eileen and Ty actually took one of the vehicles with them. So was it like a nice one or something? <laughs> it was really kind of whatever she needed to have. Okay. So she needed to have a vehicle yeah. for a while. Mm -hmm. She would have one, and Ty mm -hmm. would just see Eileen is showing up with vehicles. Right. Now she has money. How is this happening? She oh. had suspicions. It but wasn't like, hey, honey, I killed someone today. Exactly. It yeah. Was. Or at least that's what Ty claims. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So she claims that she had no idea about the killings. Mm -hmm. She would know. She suspected it. Because, yeah. you know, there's this money showing weird. up. Sometimes wallets. Mm -hmm. These men's wallets where she was seeing their IDs. Mm -hmm. You know, so there was some suspicion. Uh, but they finally, shit goes bad when they are joyriding in one of the vehicles. And they actually wreck it. 
Oh. And as they're trying to leave the scene, right. they get witnessed. They're approached by a bystander who tries to talk to them. Eileen gets belligerent. They run off. Of course, the police come. Mm -hmm. They have. They end up finding like video footage mm -hmm. of them, where they can identify them. Their faces are out yeah. there. Uh, the victim's personal items were starting to show up in pawn shops. Wow. Um, there were handprints of Eileen's in the car. Yeah, I was going to say, there's got to be prints, right? Yeah, she has an extensive criminal record. It wasn't too hard to match prints. Like, they fucking, they got your shit on file, girl. They know you. <laughs> like, you go to jail a lot. Um, so once they kind of caught yeah. up with her, they watched her for two days and ended up finally arresting her in January 1991 on an outstanding warrant at the Last Resort Biker Bar in Daytona Beach, Florida. Wow. So this is a really popular place. I don't know if you've ever seen the pictures of it, no. but it's been highly publicized, and they wow. actually did film the movie in that bar. Um, I better Yeah, <laughs> so it's it's become very famous, of course. It's like a cult mm -hmm. attraction now wow. because of Eileen. Um, so they've arrested her. The next day, they start looking for Ty. They don't know what mm -hmm. she knows. They mm -hmm. know of her. They know she's involved. Yeah. She was identified mm -hmm. at the scene, fleeing the car. Um, and she ran off to Pennsylvania. So Whoa, that's she's a long running. trip. A long trip up there. Yeah, so uh, once they caught up with her, she started singing like a bird, and mm -hmm. she said that she would agree to get a confession. She said, if you give me immunity, Whoa. I can get you a confession. <gasps> Whoa, okay. So right. here we go. We've got the one person. The love of her life. Love of her life. Mm -hmm. One person that she ever trusted is ready to betray her at the drop of a hat. So, turns on her, Ty came back to Florida, and the police put her in a motel where the cops had her make phone calls to Eileen. Mm -hmm. They recorded all the conversations. I've listened to them. Uh, I want to listen to them now. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> well, you can tell in the calls mm -hmm. that Eileen is suspicious. She yeah. asks, you hear her you say, yeah. who's in the room with you? Are you mm -hmm. in the room with somebody? Like, mm -hmm. she can feel it. Yeah. But Ty keeps pushing her. She denies it, and she uses some severe emotional manipulation. Mm. She says, the police are harassing me. They're mm. looking at me. They're yeah. looking at my family. I need you to wow. clear my name. Wow. I need you to confess so that I'm safe. That's and that's all I really wanted to do. Yeah. Right. All she wanted to do was right. protect Ty. Yeah. It didn't matter even that she suspected wow. she was being betrayed. And I mean, without that situation, though, Ty would would have gone. Like, it wasn't a total lie, I guess, right? Because in a way, she was protecting Ty by for confessing, but not, yeah. not by her, uh, her knowledge. Yeah, it's one of those uh, uh, situations where it just, it feels really sad. Yeah. I mean, like, obviously, I, what I like, did was terrible, oh, and yeah. there are seven <laughs> men that are dead because of her, and mm -hmm. these are fathers, these are husbands, right. these are people's brothers yeah. and sons, these are people's loved ones. Um, and most of them, I believe, were innocent, innocent people not trying to rape her. I do not, you yeah. know, I, I'm, the first one may have been right. self-defense, but, you yeah, know, you'll never, yeah. we'll never really know mm -hmm. that. Um, Eileen does talk about it mm -hmm. later, though. Okay. Um, but she ended up going to trial for murder, and she is convicted with the help of Ty's testimony. So Ty gets on the stand. Testifies mm -hmm. against her. This is the first time that Eileen is really realizing wow. that she's been betrayed. Yeah. Ty wouldn't even look at her. Wow. All Eileen wanted was just like all of a sudden. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't Maybe. even look at her. So um, she was sentenced to death. That's a rough. Yeah. After sentencing, she testified that she was mentally unstable, she'd been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, um, she hated prison. Oh, wow. What are you doing, man? Do we need to change locations? Or are we good? I think we're good for a minute. Okay. Let we'll us talk a little louder. We'll get loud. <laughs> it's fine. People don't understand we're doing stuff. Come on. So, um, she hated prison. One of her amazing quotes that she said, she finally admitted that she killed all those men and robbed them cold as ice. And Whoa. she said she would do it again, cold too. Cold ice. Do it again. Here's a direct quote. There's no chance in keeping me alive or anything because I'd kill again. I have hate crawling through my system. I'm so sick of hearing the wow. she's crazy stuff. I've been evaluated so many times. I'm competent, sane, and I'm telling the truth. I'm the one who seriously hates human life and would kill again. Wow. 
Yeah. Um, initially, actually, when she was convicted, though, she uh, had some choice words for the jury. Oh, I'm sure. I'm she sure. called them scumbags. Uh, she yeah. told them all that she hoped they get raped. Oh. Um, <laughs> that they are sending a raped woman to death. Wow. So it's funny. She contradicts herself a lot. Um, at one point, she really starts to kind of lose her shit in prison. Yeah. She starts accusing other prisoners of tainting her food with dirt and spit and urine. Uh, she says the guards are trying to make her commit suicide, and she thought they wanted to rape her. This is a constant theme in her life where she feels like everybody yeah. wants to hurt her sexually, which, I mean, that childhood, I can see where that mindset came from. Yeah. Um, she complained of strip searches, and she frequently had window checks and wow. door kicking. Uh, <laughs> she blamed everybody for the mattresses. Like, her mattresses had mildew, and she thought that was sabotage. Um, she just had a lot of a lot of problems in jail. She said that uh, she was being poisoned, that her mind was being tortured, and that her head was being crushed by sonic pressure. So, at this point, Eileen is getting pretty delusional. Paranoid. Um, in one of her final interviews, she, like, is completely competent through the whole thing till the end. She switches and she starts accusing the interviewer of trying to make her look crazy. Whoa. She is yeah. mad at everybody she, that everybody took advantage of her whole yeah. life. Now they're making a book and a movie and that people sold her out. That would do it. I mean, her, she's not profiting. No, she's not. And <laughs> her final words on camera were, thanks a lot, society, for railroading my ass. Ooh. Her execution took place on October 9th, 2002. She died at 9.47 a.m., right. so we know times. Yeah. Um, she refused her last meal. Whoa. What, what a move. Fuck. What yeah. a move. She said, hell no. Um, it, she could have had anything under $20. Like, I would have gotten yeah. so much shit. Oh, yeah. I would have got, I would have been, like, sitting there eating. <laughs> what would you, what would her last meal be? Oh, I don't know. It's too hard to say. I... Um, like a buffet, you know, like a little bit of everything. Okay. You know, everything I like. I would do like all the sugar. Um, <laughs> I would do so much sugar. No sugar limits. All the grains, because I cannot have grains. Um, oh, that's severe true. Severe allergic reactions. So I would eat like all the shit I could get. I'd eat bread and butter. I would eat so much ice cream. I would eat, man, yeah, I wonder so if I much shit. Meal. I wonder if I'd stay vegan on my last meal. Who knows when you're in that mindset? Oh my god. I feel like I would, would but no, no. you'd throw it out. No. You would eat cheese. No, I don't I don't know. know. <laughs> I would eat a lot of cheese. I don't really know. I mean it might help if your stomach it would make my stomach hurt. I mean, if your stomach hurts and you're on the chair and they're about to kill you, it's like, oh yeah, get me out of this pain. <laughs> uh, yeah. <yes. laughs> you don't really want to live. You know, I get so I'm much dramatic about stomach stomach pain. Like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, just kill me. <laughs> I've overeaten to a point that it's time to kill me. <laughs> That's awful. That is awful. Sorry, guys. We're morbid. It's Sorry. terrible. We apologize. Um, so instead of having food, she had a cup of coffee, which I can't dog her for. I mean, I feel like I would want espresso. Something. So, you know. Yeah, some kind of. Her last words were fantastic. Right, Are you right, ready? Last words. We're going to end it with her last words, and then we're going to look at her chart. So, uh, <clears throat> yes, I would like to say I'm sailing with the rock. I'll be back like Independence Day with Jesus, June 6th, <laughs> like the movie, Big Mothership and all, I'll be back. Eileen was the 10th woman in the United States and the second in Florida to be executed since wow. the 1976 United States Supreme Court decision that was uh, taking, or restoring, excuse me, capital punishment. So. Mm -hmm. Um, that whole thing, her, her childhood best friend, mm -hmm. who was her friend, her only friend, really, yeah. her whole life, all the way to the end, said that whole statement was Eileen talking about God and getting people to talk about her, which here we are, because <laughs> she was a hell of a character. Uh, <laughs> That's amazing. June 6th? She threw that day out the That's the day she said she was going to come back. Yeah. She said... What, what, and what day she... She died in October, so like the next year she was saying she's coming she back? She didn't say a year. She said she was going to come back like Independence Day with Jesus. Maybe she meant the 4th of July, because that's uh, wait, Independence wait, Day. Wait, what year was it again? 2002. Uh, I was going to say, maybe it was 2006. It would have been 666. Nope. She, nope. uh... Nope. nope. I think she was 
she just <laughs> said, I think she was just random. Okay, okay. Um, but uh, she was cremated. Her ashes were given to her lifelong best friend, Dawn. Dawn took her out of Florida where all her misery was. Mm -hmm. This is her words. Um, and then she scattered Eileen's ashes back in Michigan in her mm -hmm. home and planted a tree in her memory with, wow. with her ashes. So Eileen did have people who loved her. And uh, awesome. also, hey, Charlize Theron won an Academy <laughs> Award for Best Actress for playing oh, Eileen. So congratulations. There, there were some wins for people with this story. Not restaurant, got a lot more business. So. More losses than wins here. The media probably had, you know, had a bump in ratings. Oh, I am ready to look at her chart. Are Me you too. ready? Yeah. All right. I'm going to pull it up. Like a... She's got her vertex in Scorpio. Best in Scorpio. Okay. What's a vertex? All right. Um, for for uh, okay, astrology Okay. Super, for super general. Your okay. vertex kind of shows like where you're kind of directed in life a little bit. It's not as strong. It's not the same as your north node. I don't even know how I can explain it super simply in like a sentence. Okay. Aside from that. Okay. All right. Cool. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what I want to look at on um, a serial killer chart. I'm just so excited looking at a serial killer chart. Uh, we got uh, basics. Her son is in Pisces. <gasps> Pisces! Pisces, babes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Um, I'm really glad this is a Pisces person. I really like Pisces, you know. Yay! It's like my, one of my favorite signs. My, my favorite we vibe signs. well. Yeah, I really <laughs> like Pisces. Um, and then her moon, oh, Libra moon, but barely. Okay, so I have the same moon. Oh my god, holy Her's shit. <laughs> is this why I have always been more drawn to Eileen? I don't know. What's happening? Okay, Libra Moon. <laughs> Alright, we got Pisces Sun, Libra Moon. We don't have her rising, so we don't have time. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not for birth. Mm -mm. We, we tried. Got, we don't got time. I looked. I looked. And I was like, does it even say like she was born in the morning? Like, no. We got nothing. Uh, she was born in a junior high situation. <laughs> Nobody recorded the time. <laughs> yeah, well, we tried. Um, her north node uh, is in Sagittarius, um, and that does tell me a lot about how she's so willing. Well, not it wouldn't have to do with necessarily her choice, but she is headed on a life path where she is uh, traveling, you know, more like uh, exploration, adventure lifestyle. Um, I she definitely had that. So. Yeah, that that's definitely she was coming from a place of. Uh, more, more probably like a household structure, like more small community base, you know, mm -hmm. um, away from that. <laughs> and this kind of north node, south node situation, um, it's it's like when you're younger, you're really um, denied by the people around you. Okay. Um, like yeah. in your family, but also you know your commute, your small communities. Like uh, she definitely experienced yeah. that. I yeah. mean. A literal abandonment and yeah. then that rejection from her peers and that being, you know, yeah, ostracized. Yeah, it's, it's really hard. This can, it's can, you know, usually show like, um, this could be showing like bullying or, or it could be a neglectful thing. It really depends on the house and stuff it's okay. in, but like, um, yeah, it's definitely um, a, an issue with people in the past for sure. And then her north note being Sagittarius, you're really like, um, it's not escaping, but you're. Because Pisces is more escapist. I guess, well, she is, you know, she does have a lot yeah, of Pisces going on. She's escaping, yeah. Yeah, she's going away. She's traveling away, like, um, pretty far. I mean, she was from Michigan. She went to Florida. Like, that's a pretty good. She did literal escaping, yeah. but she also did mental escaping. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, she that's a Pisces alcohol, thing. which is <laughs> totally a Pisces thing. So. That's a Pisces thing. That, she that definitely escape is a mindset where, you know, you, you kind of are made to have this like a uh, strong inner world where you can escape to mm -hmm. um it's also you know i'd love to see what's in her where her 12th house is because that also can show like uh that kind of energy it can also show some stronger some nice things like your intuition and um you know like your hidden talents and things like that can also be shown in your 12th house but it's also it is it is um, one of the the darker houses well, I'd love to know Eileen's hidden talents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, she didn't really get a chance to explore them, but who knows what might have been. Maybe she could have been a great crafter. She would have been really great at wearing vests and going to craft <laughs> fairs. She might have been good at whittling. Mm -hmm. And we don't know. I mean, a moon, and, a moon and Libra, she could have. You know, she probably had, like, a, a mindset for, like, what would be pleasant. Like, you know, she wanted she wanted to have some kind of emotional balance in her life, for sure, with that, that Libra moon. Yeah. You know, you're kind of, 
it, oh, that's really rough too because when you have a Libra moon you're looking for uh, comfort uh, through like oh. watching reactions of other people so you're really like it, you know Libra is kind of like um, the opposite of identity is opposite of Aries um, mm -hmm. So it's really like you're looking for your identity through other people. It's, it's, so is that yeah. like, would that be approval seeking type thing? Oh yeah, like that would be an approval thing. Oh, like if you have a lot of Libra energy, you might be a person who um, says something and kind of gauges the room around you. But before you even say anything, you probably oh. already kind of know because you've observed those people so long. Oh, um, wow. If you're really, you're watching what everybody does all the time, and you kind of say like, okay, this will get a good reaction, and I'll say this. Like, it's not oh, always wow. that contrived. Okay. A lot of it's more like subconscious. But like just it's, a lot of awareness. Yeah, too, you're, you're really that. focused on other people. Okay. It's hard to see yourself sometimes when you have, so it's it's almost like she, it was hard to see her own emotions sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, it, this can also be shown in the seventh house, whatever, it's in your seventh house. Um, you know, this can also show like she was going to be really emotionally committed to a partnership with a moon in Libra, because Libra is um, a partnership type of sign. Um, yeah, it, it's rough. But her moon um, does have a square to Uranus, uh, so this shows uh, a lot of unexpected uh, issues, uh, like an issue with like, probably identity to some extent, it's in retrograde as well, um, wow. like unexpected, uh, this is, oh okay, yeah, Uranus is in Cancer in retrograde. That's definitely that's also the mother. Um, cancer, you're looking at things with the mother, um, unexpected issues with the mother. Um, it's kind of like this spontaneity of the universe just really like slapping her in the face emotionally. Um, yeah, super. And it's also squaring her Neptune as well, which is in retrograde. So this. Okay, is, and I learned last time. Yeah, squares are bad. <laughs> so squares are stress. Squares are stressful squares and challenges are, no. in life. <laughs> <laughs> squares are so no. They're so no. Um, yes, knowledge right there. <laughs> I'm learning every time. <laughs> pop, 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 pop culture astrology. Yes. Squares are like a no. Squares are <laughs> terrible. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Kind of like that pop culture version off. Okay, so then we have a square to Neptune retrograde as well. So Neptune... Okay. One of the things Neptune is really famous for is like, you know, it's your intuition. It's like your dream world, you know? Um, it's it's also how you kind of view the world. It's like, um, like for example, Pisces, which is ruled by Neptune. Um, oh, like sometimes the they will, yeah, sometimes they will uh, kind of view the world through these rose-colored glasses. Like, like they want to see the nice things because if they, as soon as, as soon as they take those rose-colored glasses off, like, they feel like they have to escape. Like it's like, mm -hmm. oh, this is too much, you know. They, they Pisces feels everything, uh, um, totally. so it's really oh, stressful um, when you have a lot of Pisces energy going on. So Neptune also having stress on it like that, like the the stress from her, um, you know, things that would come up chaotically in her life would do a lot of damage to her worldview as well mm -hmm. as her emotional stuff. And her day life, her day to day mm -hmm. life was just <laughs> constant chaos. Oh. So that seems like it was. Yeah. Ugh. I can't see anything in Virgo, which would show, like, more, like, day-to-day -day routines and stuff, unfortunately. Uh, if we could see her houses, we could see a sixth house issue, but I don't, I don't know. Um, okay. And we have, that's because we don't have the birth time. Yes. Like it won't show those yes. houses. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, we'll have to probably make sure as soon as we get something with the birth time, because I'm a little curious now. Yes. All right. Uh, then we get a, all right, here's a big stressor. Saturn square Ceres. Um, so Ceres is an asteroid. Saturn is a big planet with rings. Yeah, um, I, I know that one. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know. That's what famous one. Uh, apparently, like NASA or somebody got like a really good picture, like the best picture ever of them of its rings late, recently. Oh. Like, look it up. My what? nephew absolutely loves <laughs> space, so I'm sure I could ask him. He's eight. I'm sure I could <laughs> ask him, and he would talk about it for two days straight. Perfect. Like he loves it. So. Google has decided I need to have uh, news alerts when things with the planets happen. So I get all the Mars oh updates my God, now. Google I get knows like, your heart. It, Google knows what's what I want to see apparently. So, um, <laughs> so Saturn is you know it's a lot of restriction. Um, it's kind of like an old grumpy man who wants you to do things by the book. Oh he yeah, it's so like lame. kind of that energy. It's not always that bad, <laughs> but that's when it's bad. It's like it's like real bad. It's okay. like old mean grandpa, like, you okay. know. Um, and they, it's very limiting, very discipline-oriented, uh, structural. And then when you have this as 
squared to Ceres. Ceres is what you need to feel loved in life. Um, so there was a limitation. She was not getting what she needed to feel loved in life. Um, she had a little bit of support from her moon, which is trying, which is an easy uh, aspect uh, to Ceres. So she could, she could almost, almost help herself. Uh, emotionally, but there was uh, there was too much external things. It's funny because she like literally said that about yeah. her life at the end of like she just wanted to be better. She just wanted to be this kind of person that for some reason she couldn't be as yeah. awesome that you can like see that. Yeah, on the chart. no, yeah. It's just looking at all these stressors on her chart. She does have a lot of squares. Um, I don't think does she have any positive aspect that's oh not also God. squared. I mean, it's nice that she has some positive aspects, but wow. Um, okay, so another thing here is uh, her sun sign is squared her north node and south node. So it means it's it's like uh, if it's if something is squared one of them, it is squared both of them um, mm -hmm. because they are exactly opposite on the chart, which is going to be harder to explain uh, than to show. So I won't go on about that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> your north node and south yeah. node show <laughs> your life path. Okay. Yeah, it's your life purpose. It's point what you. It's kind of like this, like feeling like you're constantly wanting more of a certain type of thing in your life, or you feel cold to go a certain way in life. Like a direction. Yeah, it's not even like you. Cho you don't really choose it. It's just kind of like, oh, I just have to do the more of this. Like, okay. It's like yeah. a drive to follow in this mm -hmm. direction. I feel like this is my purpose. Yes. This is what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. My mission. <laughs> it's a mission. And that's what I was saying was her uh, past with uh, being denied by her community and moving away, escaping. Mm -hmm. um, it's connected to that. Her sun sign being in Pisces um, is square to uh, her north and south node. So this shows that her being herself was a challenge to her own life path. Oh, um, her oh. being herself uh, was a huge challenge in that, you know, she had to... It, it was like, either whether she looked to her past or her future, it, there, was, there was this feeling like she couldn't be herself. Um, Probably a feeling like uh, an issue, a little, probably a little bit of an issue with identity or self-esteem with this. Um, well, she definitely talked about like how she looked down on herself for homosexuality, yeah. mm -hmm. which is another, you know, yeah. really in line with that identity issue. I know that I struggled with that at yeah. that point in my life too. Like I, I yeah. totally get that identity thing where it's even your sexuality is confusing, and right? Like, oh, especially yeah. if you look down on yourself. Yeah. for what you're feeling it's so and then figuring out what you're feeling and then yeah trying to feel about how you're feeling it's like a whole mess yeah it takes a long time mm. oh i lean and oh okay and then I, mean, I feel like there's something else i want to say about that but it's not coming to me right now um yeah it's, it's basically like she's almost directionless a little bit with this aspect yeah. um or at least at times she's going to feel very 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 directionless um, let's see, her Chiron is in Aquarius, uh, Pholus is in Aquarius, Pallas is in Aquarius, Mercury is in Aquarius, uh, Mercury... Wow, there's a lot of Aquarius Yeah, happening. she does, yeah. Um, she, and then, uh, all of those are hit with some big squares to oh Vesta. Um, so Vesta is, is that energy, it's in her vertex. Um, it's what you're most diverted, devoted to. <laughs> diverted to. Diverted to. It's what you're most devoted to in life, in this life. It's it's usually like a very natural like devotion to something. It's not really something you choose. You know, it's not like I okay. decide I care about puppies. You know, like right? It's, it's like a, <laughs> I don't know. It's, she's just very devoted to actually like a scorpionic energy. It's very like um, like intense, strong, um, mm -hmm. kind of more probably a little bit more tough, you know, she wanted, that kind of explains why I think when she was older, she kind of went that route, like, to feel some kind of good about herself, like, yeah. uh, there is a trying to her sun sign from there, so, uh, it seems like it might have been a little supportive of her, you know, these trines are good, she's, she's, tr you know, she did, like, man, okay, so the squares I was talking about, when you have, um, someone with mercury with a strong square like that, it's, it can really mess up your thinking. Uh, Mercury is about how you know your common sense, your your basic practicality, your thinking, your thoughts, your communication. Um, and being in Aquarius, this really makes it uh, kind of like that detached situation I was talking about okay, before. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the last episode, catch it on. <laughs> catch it on the on the repeat. I don't know. On the repeat. <laughs> Yeah, so, oh, okay. Sidebar. <laughs> so, I mean, for 
her to for her to keep feeling good about herself a little bit, like she had to kind of me- it kind of messed with her thinking. Um, I didn't know like her that. communication. It it really made it you know it was already kind of in a detached manner, you know, very smart but kind of detached manner. Um, that really can that really puts a big stress, but a big like emphasis on that. Um, and then Chiron being right there as well. Um, this can really show that she was not helped by, um, you know, like, the larger community. I was going like, to say, was society, anyone anywhere? Society <laughs> failed her. And yeah. that's shown by her Chiron uh, with massive, with squares to Vesta in uh, Aquarius. She believed society yeah. failed her. She mm-hmm. believed that she, you know, yeah. that Folis was her reality. Yeah, Folis is that. And Folis is an asteroid, which really, like, a, what's, I'm going to say this word wrong, exacerbates? Exacerbates. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Did I say it right? Well, it exaggerates, I can say exaggerates, um, wherever, whatever area it's in. It's similar to Jupiter. Jupiter will expand whatever area it's in. Okay. Um, for her, hers is conjunct Pluto, uh, so you're expanding change in life. Um, for her folus, it's, it's exaggerating her life trauma. So it's making it even oh, bigger. It's and, and it's it. yeah. yeah, it's taking it the extra mile, and it almost makes it where she's tripping herself up over time. Because oh. uh, you know you can really just shoot yourself in the foot with a bad bullet placement. Um, mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Her a lot of a lot of issues there with Aquarius. Um, that's really rough. She mm. definitely had it really rough. Yeah. <laughs> Can you see anything on there, like, any changes in, like, being aggressive or anything? Oh, because right, that was right. the two sides of her is, like, oh, she yeah. seemed to have this oh, yeah, one yeah, side yeah. that was really fun and liked to mm-hmm. party and liked to kind of escape and be wild and yes. free, wild child. Then she had this other yes. side where people always talk about her temper, how she would just go off the handle, how she would become physically violent with just about everybody. And that was later in life, right? Because yeah, this was in her 20s, her like mid to late 20s, when mm-hmm. she started getting into that life of crime, because her younger childhood days, they didn't talk about her mm-hmm. ever being violent really until, you know, she started drinking and partying, so I'm sure alcohol yeah. did not help with, you know, right. her feelings of anger that she was so going on, but... When leading up to just her killing, it seems like there was a something like her, a spike in her, mm-hmm. the way she expressed her aggression. Not that she didn't feel it before, but yeah. like her expression of it certainly changed and manifested in a way. And also that paranoia of like always thinking somebody's gonna hurt you. Yeah, because she carried that like all the way to accusing guards of peeing on her mattress and stuff and like peeing in her food. Like, that would be that delusional aspect is a lot of uh, a poorly aspected Pisces and Neptune placement. Um, mm-hmm. And she does have that. <laughs> um, and it's really tied to her emotions those delusions, especially because the moon is conjunct uh, Neptune on her chart. Um, okay, so the aggressive side. Okay, this is why I forgot to talk about it because <laughs> she does have some nice aspects to Mars, which is where you look for um, or like a, it's it's a more combative energy, Mars. Uh, you know, okay. it's, it's kind of like, you think of an Aries kind of fiery, kind of... My mom's an Aries! <laughs> my mom! My mom! Yeah, so we got Mars here in Capricorn. Capricorn makes Mars um, a little more, cal- like, practical, maybe calculated, maybe a little bit more, um, like... It like, like structured, it would be good for her. Like, she she needs like that. her ambition and her passion in life is going to be more structured. Um, except, you know, she doesn't know where the fuck she's going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, she's got the thing with the, the, the issue here is um, that she has uh, Lilith and Juno conjunct this, which can mean that she feels empowered when she uses her Mars placement. Uh, she feels committed to, use, to sticking with um, how she feels empowered. Okay. Um, Which seems this, like that's murdering and dominating this, it, it, it's, it's a potential right there. Because yeah. you, know, you got a strong vibe going with that. But the, the, kill, the kicker, the killer. The killer is, uh, is Eileen. A twin the kicker is <laughs> some other thing. Some other thing, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, it's a, there's a quin comes from her Mars to that Uranus retrograde that I mentioned earlier in okay. Cancer. Um, this is, this is mother issues, (laughs) this is unexpected chaos from the world really hitting you, uh, this is issues, Uranus also rules Aquarius, so this is also issues with society not helping you, 
this is, um, this, I could go on and on about this, but that is in quincunx to uh, her Mars. So this is like a block energy. So all of this is happening and there's a block to her um, ambitions and passions in life and how she exerts herself physically uh, and um, combatively in some way. So it does, like when there's a big block like this, I would be tempted to say like there's probably a shift at some point because um, it's kind of like you're running into the same wall over and over your whole life and then at some point she just freaks out you know because <laughs> I, I mean maybe she was uh, like maybe she was raped but um, it looks like yeah there was definitely potential like if you're gonna hit the same exact block in life over and over and your energy is so intensified you know, it's kind of it's kind of like a, a pendulum effect. Like if the pendulum's swinging a little bit, you know, it's not a whole lot going on. But if your energy's swinging a lot, yeah. like you're gonna hit that block and you're gonna freak out. Um, that's where I see that aggression coming out. Um, she does yeah. have Venus in Aries, uh, but that I don't really see that necessarily being. Um, it could kind of be like a vibe where if you fuck with me, then like I'm gonna fuck with you. I but mean that would that is uh, definitely how she that would could, react. That could definitely be a part of it as well. Yeah. It's like one of the things Ty would say is that when they would go out, Eileen would get in so many confrontations <laughs> that it was embarrassing. But it got to a point where it was like they couldn't go anywhere without wow. Eileen getting into some sort of verbal altercation. Just wow. like she was ready to fight. Like she was. Yeah. Ready to be she was on defense mode. Yeah, she was on defense mode her whole life, so she was ready to be the victim of something and then retaliate and react. So that was definitely um, kind of her her thing. Okay, I'm gonna pull up her death. Okay. All right. So this is a way more complicated chart. I'll just show you guys for like a second. Oh like, uh, yeah, the chart. It's not gonna show up really well, but I, I thought it might be fun. Just put a still on the chart, like. <laughs> You know, meet it in there, put a still frame, oh I don't know. We'll get our tech people to do that. Okay, I want to look at... Amy's it. our tech people. <laughs> That's me, though. Know. Uh, Barley's our sound guy, and she's been a terrible dom. Oh, okay, oh here's God, something okay. interesting. I'm ready. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I'm ready. All right, her vertex is conjunct um, where... Okay, there's your ascendant is what was coming up on the horizon. Okay. Uh, the moment that we pulled the chart. Um, okay. So it's exactly over her vertex um, on her chart. So the moment she died, um, the sun was rising right where her uh, part of her life was headed, if that makes sense. So huh. it's, it's really rare what to have like mean? an exact act, like aspect like that. Does that mean like... Oh, and Pholus is there as well. Oh okay. god, what so is this is her. This is her um, combative energy with your Venus and Aries. This is her part of it, not all of it. Uh, this is her shooting herself in the foot energy, like like messing herself up, society failing her uh, energy. It's all right on the horizon as uh, she is killed. Um, wow. So it's really it's really symbolic uh, wow. energy right there with her death. And then uh, Neptune, I can see why she's getting like really delusional up until the point where she dies because yeah. Neptune is retrograde right on top of Chiron and Pholus on her chart on a, at this moment and that time. Mm -hmm. Neptune moves slow. So this was, you know, probably months of her uh, really feeling delusional and really getting like, um, just so paranoid. Yeah, yeah. That's like, right. Because it's right over Chiron. That is her, her biggest emotional trauma in her life. And then Pholus exaggerating it. Neptune is right there giving her oh delusion. <laughs> that sounds awful. That's, that's all leading up to her death. And, you know, it was there on her death as well. Wow. Um, man. Yeah, Lilith was in Aries when she, uh, leading up to her death. Like, in, on her death. And when Lilith is in Aries, my Lilith in Aries. Um, <laughs> uh, no, but Lilith in an Aries, it, it can really make you over-sexualize things to, to some extent. Huh. Like it kind of makes like that Aries competitive energy be like a sexual competitive energy in a way. Like it's an empowerment energy okay. through like sexuality. Interesting. Um, it's also um, through with that Aries energy. It's like uh, it's almost it's really fiery. Uh, it can be um, it can be combative. Uh, where you know that kind of makes sense leading up to her, she's having these delusions, and then 
<laughs> she's feeling extra combative. Extra. Uh, I mean, she always felt combative, but... Uh-huh. <laughs> a little bit aggressive there. Um, yeah, there's a lot to be having. Hi! <laughs> <Hi. laughs> she's overheard, like, the worst parts. But... It's, it's fine. It's fine. We have, we have fans. Lining up to see what's oh, happening. Oh, how did I not notice this right away? Okay, okay so she's okay. also got her north node and south node flipped uh, the day she died. So, so her world it turned upside down, down, literally? Or like her, 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 her past was her future at the moment, her future was her past at the moment. That's pretty cool. What? <laughs> I love it with her last words in combination with her last words of like, I'll be back, like Independence Day. Like she, I want to know why she said June six. That's really killing me. I don't know, but she did say it. I, I, that was a long way away from this because she died in October. But mm. just her, her last things that she said, it was that's just so funny that she, she had, made that proclamation. <laughs> just yeah, kind of, I could look at this forever. I gotta stop. She's she does have a Jupiter in Leo while she was on like probably doing her trial and doing all of that. Uh, she did a lot of interviews, mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, that I mean, Leo, Leo, like in the last uh, the pilot episode, uh, we uh, talked about how Leo. <laughs> we did talk a lot about well, Leo. Black Leo Dahlia. makes things really public. Yeah, you know, they're almost on per like performing. It's like yes. it's you know they're up on the stage of Leo, and like I said earlier, Jupiter expands in energy for you at the time. Um, and a transit chart, it's it's a temporary expansion, and she for her. It's, it's it's an expansion of that publicity that that uh that like life force type of can you tell like any sort of feeling she had about it because publicly she was lashing out against it like publicly she's mm -hmm. accusing everybody she's saying thanks for railroading my ass society like fuck you like she called everybody scumbags <laughs> like she really had some hostile feelings toward the media. She knew the movie was yeah. being made at the time. She knew it was going to come out. Mm -hmm. She kept accusing her of making money off of her rape, off of her story. So like she had some strong public opinions, but yeah. can you see okay, anything? Yeah, I can see some of that? that. I can see that. So transit moon is what you want to look at for like passing emotions. Okay. Um, transit moon was square uh, Jupiter and transit Jupiter, like the publicity thing. Um, leading up to her death and on her okay. death, uh, so she's got, you know, she's she's really like, that's a big challenge for her. That's stressful for her at the time. All that publicity, mm -hmm. um, not happy about that. Okay, um, that was a genuine emotion. I figured yeah, it was. Yeah, and her and the moon uh, was leading up to her Saturn, which is limitation. Uh, it was in Scorpio, which is traditionally, you know, the sign of death. It's transformation. Mm -hmm. It's it's all of that. So it's, I don't know, we would want to see more of like a house situation, but, well, I guess we do have a house. Like, <gasps> we have a house. It's in her, oh, yeah, because it's in the first house. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the moon, the moon in, in Scorpio was the first house. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. So she, yeah, she was not feeling good about it. She kind of felt like she could have some, like, creativity about her, um, well, not creativity, but kind of like, she was finding a new approach to things at the time as well, because she's got this um, quintile over to her massive Aquarius problem. <laughs> um, she's kind of, I think she's trying to get her mind right a little bit at this time. Mm -hmm. um, she's also got a trying to her Uranus issue um, from Transit Moon. She's she's really, I think she's trying to be at peace with it to some extent, uh, but she's not happy about a lot of other things going on. <laughs> um, and that makes, that makes sense. To yeah. Me. Uh, yeah. Oh, she made so it known. Here. She made her unhappiness quite known <laughs> to quite everyone known. in every situation. <laughs> oh, Eileen. So the current eighth house, when she was, when the moment she died, um, was over her. It was right next to her uh, life path issue, where I said things were flipped on the day uh -huh. she died. Um, Saturn is also there. It shows restriction again. Um, so okay. she. It was. It can also show kind of like a a law situation sometimes and I kind of see that as like very restricting she's in a cell she's being, right. being forced to die yeah right um so her death is very uh structured and um uh, limiting yes <laughs> yeah you know when you don't get to choose how you die or when you die and they like shoot you up with something and she yeah Chiron was over her Mars issue at this time that's emotional trauma triggered by 
progression and your uh, our passion and ambitions in life. There's so much here, but yeah, I will stop there. That is okay. there's a lot. A big happening. thing that I was like kind of remembering from the first episode where you said something that has stuck with me. I've made you remind me of it multiple times. What was where it? Where <laughs> it was something along the lines of where like our lives are like loosely oh, programmed. Loosely programmed. Yeah, yes, yeah. I love that phrase, and I feel like for Eileen. Like, had, oh, absolutely. had she been everyone. born into a different mm-hmm. situation, mm-hmm. like, had her grandparents been a positive placement mm-hmm. for her, or, like, yes. whatever, it sounds like she still would have had, like, a lot of trouble. Yeah, I mean, still, in, like, in my the, opinion, it's, you know, yeah. is the energy will manifest either, you know, it's kind of like that pendulum thing I mentioned earlier. Yeah. It's like, if, if it, it was full swing for her, her whole life. Like, her energy was, it was, the, her chart was manifesting in a very strong way her whole life. But that's Eileen Mornos, you guys. Mm-hmm. That is uh, America's first serial killer that was a female to kill like a guy, which, whoa. Killed like a dude. I guess um, you could call her feminist. She went about it very wrongly. Um, she's been a, a fixture in pop culture for that reason. Mm-hmm. Also, the movie Monster, of course. Mm-hmm. Great movie. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Yeah. It's, I think this is also watching. a testament to having societal uh, things set up to help people like in society. support. Yeah, yeah. So I, you're not just, you don't start off bad and just get continually kicked to the curb. Advocating for children in bad <laughs> situations. Yes. That's really like, to me, I think mm-hmm. of Eileen when I when I see her, I think yeah. of that little girl that mm-hmm. was abandoned at four years old and never really had a place in the world mm-hmm. and was a complete outcast in those formative years yes. of becoming a teenager and hitting puberty like she was already sexually active right. before there was so puberty much. and that's what that could do to your brain as a young girl and for real thank you guys for being here yeah. um thanks for taking this ride with us mm-hmm. we are having a great time doing it we're both really passionate about you know mm-hmm. our parts in this yeah. and uh enjoy doing this together mm-hmm. so Welcome aboard, people. We're going to keep going. Until, here we go. Buckle yeah, up. Here we go. Um, we're going to have a name next week, so please help us pick one out. Mm-hmm. Again, Instagram is the best place to find both of us, so mm-hmm. check us out. Participate. Get in on this. Get help in us, on it. Help Get us in there. Stuff. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. Bye, y'all.